no such. Because what you are learning in European universities is only good for Western Europe. You never find a Chinese studying what you are studying except from a comparative perspective. So Africa has the duty to unlearn some certain things and to begin to learn new things which will address our specific needs. And I'm beginning to see this. If you see what is happening in Sudan now, it is a beginning of the protest of the Sudanese people that we want to participate in determining how we are governed. They are going to make mistakes in the process. Maina, who is in, in France, knows that France was a yeah. monarchy. And the process of bringing France where it was is as recent as 1958. It is a process that we must begin to undertake and do so boldly. And if we do so boldly, we are going to ensure that it is done, but it's an intergenerational struggle and we are merely making our contribution at this stage. I, uh, Professor, you've made serious points, all of you, the four of you, and the plus come. I want to bring in another direction. Most of the students are learning European politics. We are taught of theories of Adam Smith, Karl Marx, you know, Socrates, Aristotle, the Plato Republic, which are foreign. Leaders on the continent usually try to bring something. Gaddafi, for example, the late, brought the Green Revolution. In your opinion, Daniel Wesonga, do you think there are external darker forces that have influenced and made it very difficult for Africa ever, ever to be stable. And let's be candid here, Professor Maina. Let's be candid. Let's talk the Tinashe. truth. Tinashe, John, John, Tinashe, yes. my friend Godfrey, and uh, Professor Piero Wesonga. Yes. Muhammad Gaddafi tried to say he wants to trade in something. Where is he? Sarkozy killed him. Sarkozy killed him. And he was killed. He was telling us that terrorists are coming to kill me. You are killing me instead of terrorists. Didn't you hear all of you? You are here. Now, are there darker forces that try? to make sure that elections are used as a tool all the time. We have understood the problem of bad governance. Okay, it could be, it could be not. But what, what about these darker forces that Tinashe talks about, that we always hear, that a country like a Democratic Republic of Congo says it does not have money to conduct elections. Honestly, Yet when you go, Kabila was telling us he wanted to stay in power because he said he didn't have money to conduct elections. $2.8 billion. Congo has more than that. Now, is whose problem is this? Wesonga, briefly. Then I come back for second round question. And all of you can take that question. Thank you. Yes, sir. thank you so much, uh, Dr. Masanga David. And uh, of course, this is a very, very interesting uh, topic, but uh, quite important since it touches about uh, our continent, the African continent, uh, the continent where since we got our independence, we've never seen progress. Rather, we've been in wrangles uh, year in, year out. And uh, to answer your question, I agree with uh, uh, Professor uh, Lumumba and many other uh, panelists that Africa uh, we do have some evil hands uh, from outside uh, which have uh, been trying to actually control the way the African continent uh, governs itself. If you read the history of Africa uh, through a book called The uh, States of Africa, you realize that uh, uh, tribalism is an evil which was introduced by the uh, European, uh, the Western powers that came to colonize us. 
the boundaries that we have today were all demarcated by Otto von Bismarck uh, in Berlin, Germany. And therefore, these people brought a scenario where they actually segregated Africans and uh, fragmented them into tribes, into regions, and into provinces. In that, uh, we had um, we, we had a, a very very a united society, but they were able to dismantle that and bring people into cocoons of uh, tribal affiliations, and therefore weakening uh, the structures of leadership that we had before they were able to colonize us and take away our land. So you realize that uh, since uh, the white people, the Western powers, left us after uh, after colonizations. Uh, Africa did not heal from these fragmentations that were initiated by the Western powers. And uh, to add on that, they gave us a mirage which they call democracy. Democracy that is not quite in tandem with uh, whatever kind of leadership that we had as a people before they came into our land. Remember, Africa was predominantly uh, led by chiefdoms and, uh, of course, kingdoms. And therefore, this uh, issue of democracy seems to be a bit strange to us, and uh, it cannot work perfectly, uh, uh, putting in mind that uh, we are a society which... Can we therefore, yes. can we therefore, we stronger, go back to kingdoms? Mm -hmm. How yes, many of you want to go back to kingdoms? I don't know whether a professor would like to go back to a kingdom. At whatever all. China did, Dr. Mazanga, you know, we look at this new thing they, they call democracy, and we look at our culture, and uh, we can take a, a small mix of whatever they offer, the good things about their democracy, and be able to infuse it uh, with our traditional way of governance and come up with a hybrid system of governance that could be able to work for us. That is something that uh, Lee Kuan Yew, the uh, founding father of Singapore did. He was uh, a democratic president, but nonetheless, he had some totalitarian tendencies, especially when it came to implementing important government projects. I submit Dr. Masanga. Okay, thank you very much. Godfrey, do you have anything to say before I floated the question to, to the rest of the panel? Godfrey? Godfrey, do you have anything to say? Okay. The, 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 the question, Professor, is are there external forces? With, without doubt, you know, there they, they will they'll always be external forces. Yes. Remember that with the so-called death of colonialism, the imperial agenda did not die. The imperial agenda is alive and well. And most states in Africa are dependent on being underwritten by different countries. So the fact that the Western European powers interfere politically and otherwise, the fact that during the Cold War, the Soviet Union tried to interfere otherwise, militarily and otherwise, the fact that as we speak now, in my view, there is a new scramble for Africa. That is why you see the Americans uh, uh, here, the British are here, the French are here, the European Union is here, the Chinese are here, the Russians are here, are here, are here the, now. Tax, the tax are here. So yeah. the fact that there are external powers is, is something is a fact of life there will always be countries choosing to conquer the only thing that the conquers now is cultural and economic and we africans and i think is maina who said this we have lamented for too long for how long will we continue to lament knowing so as we do what are we deliberately doing as Africans, individually as countries and collectively as victims of that manipulation to ensure that we control our affairs? Because we know that we are divided and manipulated. One of the things that we saw even in the early days, we are aware that we would be manipulated. The African Union is aware that we are manipulated. The regional bodies are aware that if we don't work as a unit, we don't. don't. Uh, professor, so, can, I, can I interject here? Please, this you is, may. This is fire to fire. Yes, please. Is there African Union? Do you African have an African Union? Union? Are, are, you read, are, are you, Professor, be frank and tell the Africans who are here. Do yes. we have African Union or African Union has been rented? 
the African Union as presently constructed is a useless organization that does very little to the continent. Okay. And, and, and is also remember that the budget of the African Union is also financed externally. And he who pays the piper calls the tune. And <laughs> as a part of the solution to our problems is that Africa must regain control of our institution. When you go to many African meetings, you find there are this organization from this Europe, this organization from the United States of America. You think they just love us to give us money? When they sponsor these things, they are doing it because there is a benefit that they are going to derive. But I want to come back to the question, what can we do? Tribes will always be there. Tribalism was introduced for purposes of governing and manipulating us. And secondly, I want to say again, and Maina has given the example of Morocco, and you can also give the example of the Emiratis and the Qataris, they have the Kuwaitis. They have used their systems, which are homegrown, to address the problems of all their people. In Africa, we must also ask ourselves what works for ourselves. If we are determined as we are, that we don't want to destroy Kenya as it is, what should we do within Kenya to ensure that governance system works for us and electoral periods are not used for ethnic contests, which then threaten the very existence of lives and livelihoods. These are the questions that we are not interested in answering. In Kenya recently, in the last one week, you've seen the spirited attempt to amend the Political Parties Act. For what reason? It's simply designed to make politicians enter into alliances so that they can acquire power for its own sake. This is the kind of thing that in other countries should be condemned because these people who are perpetrating these processes are selfish individuals. They are not interested in Kenya. They are interested in political power. And we can see that not only in Kenya, but in other countries like Nigeria. So we are not addressing the real issue. We must call out these individuals who are selfish and their desire is to remain in power or to attain power. And they have hypnotized us on an ethnic basis and they deserve to be condemned whether in Kenya, Uganda or Tanzania. A question of fire to Tinashe. Do we, yeah. do we start shooting people by firing squad? We have, yeah, because, uh, 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 from the panel, what the professor is talking, yeah. <laughs> it can, it's not possible. And what Maina is talking is not possible. Mm -hmm. What do we do? This gentleman, Daniel, how said, is not, how is not okay. possible, Dakari? Oh, this, All right. I'm coming to you. I want him to give us a solution. Uh, Kumaro, right. uh, Daniel was saying, the Prime Minister of Singapore mixed two things. And on African continent, we have a president who has mixed two things, and the things have worked. Maina, you know very well, Rwanda, and uh, his, uh, the professor PLO Lumumba has been a good visitor, well received in Rwanda. In fact, when he talks in Chigali, even Kagame listens, and he has never arrested him, <laughs> and he will not do. But Kagame has mod modeled his type of governance. He has mixed the so-called democracy. You can call it elections of showing yourself that you are electing. And then you bring in <laughs> your honesty <laughs> that you are, you are having an election. And at the same time telling people that this is me and me alone. So I'm asking a question. Have we reached yeah. the point to do what the Prime Minister of Singapore did to okay. Africa in order to change the system? All right. Uh, yeah, I can say Africa is always ready to change because Africa is us here, the panelists and the people who are listening. Africa, to me, the problem is mindset. By um, the way, we have come back. We have come back. Uh, Professor, you have seen some light in your house. <laughs> no, there is, there is no light. <laughs> my place, my, my place, yeah, no. my office is a few, 
is a few meters away from you in Rwanda. So yeah, no, but my my condolences to the professor. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the death of the light. <laughs> <laughs> Maina in Paris is not having any of those problems. I am also in London and I'm not having any problem. And Dr. Matanga, uh, I, 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 I hope with the external forces at work. Exactly. They didn't want to. This is professor. bad governance. This is bad You know, Professor was hitting too many points that they cut him off. Okay, proceed. <laughs> All right. Um, I, 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 I'm saying Africa is always ready because the, we, we should speak up, we should inspire. Uh, that's the purpose of these uh, discussions. Uh, professor has been talking about discussions that people are not comfortable to. To, to 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 start and to to to, to participate uh, these discussions they change the narratives and the mindset of africa but now uh, I, 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 I will talk to uh, about zimbabwe i, I will do stick to zimbabwe um i think in in in, in the context of zimbabwe uh, we the first is the legislature we have got um okay the first law now uh, which is called the data protection act uh, it seeks to to, to to stop the abuse of social media uh we, we know that the social media the facebook whatsapp twitter they are controlled from from us uh so there was a lot of abuse in terms of denigrating the government uh the leadership uh until certain certain people are treated as holy which is the opposition now that law is in effect and the, the social media sanity is prevailing the second leg um, a bill uh, we, we, which we hope very soon after the, the processes would be enacted, enacted into law. It's called the, the Patriotic Act uh, law, which is the equal version of the US, the Logan Act. Uh, so that you, you are not supposed to just meet a foreign ambassador, a foreign uh, organizations. If you are not within the, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, you don't have the power, the mandate to meet foreign government officials. This is the problem in Africa currently that the opposition, the civic society are taking advantage of. Um, when, when, when we have got a unity of purpose, uh, in, in national interest, it's easy to work for national interests together to be progressive. But if, you, if you some are having a dinner in Paris, having lunch in Washington, uh, the, 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 the narratives become divided. So I think legislation plays a law, a law, uh, number one. Number two, um, I think the way that we call it, yeah, but I think the law uh, and also uh, in discussions uh, where government and opposition, we, we, we need a lot of discussions because uh, narratives are sponsored. <coughs> Uh, the West sponsors narratives, the government has got its narrative. Sometimes someone who is average is confused. So I think in, in, in Zimbabwe, the, the, the two pieces of law, uh, I think the, 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 the outcomes will be better because the opposition had run amok. It, it was going wild. And uh, the law is going to work. And uh, poverty alleviation is also key because in Africa, Poverty is, is, is dominant. Neocolonization, uh, the, the monista is, is poverty. When people are in poverty, they, they are vulnerable to any kind of 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 Dinashe. Dinashe, who makes them poor? Is Africa poor? Yeah, Africa, Africa is poor. Uh, 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 as who I makes, said, answer, answer, answer me. This is a fire question. Who makes okay. them poor? Uh, impose the leadership who are controlled by the West. Yes. No, not necessarily. Johnson not necessarily. Sanity, and Tinashe, I want to just Thank to put you, it before my inner card. Tinashe says yes. that Africa is poor, and I agree with her, Johnson Sally, formerly of Liberia, that Africa is poor because it is poorly governed. And, and yes. I don't think after 58 years we are going to blame uh, imposed uh, leaders. This, if you look at your typical African leader, including those in power in Zimbabwe, they are, some of them are multi-millionaires. 
So even those in government are to be blamed, not just the opposition. This idea that the opposition is the source of the problem is what is denying us the opportunity to address our real problems. Every person in African political leadership should say we have sinned, we have sinned, we are part of the problem and the time is now to solve the problem whether they are in government, whether they are in the opposition. How is it that those in government have all these goodies, they have motorcades, they have beautiful things and the people they are governing are living in poverty? How is it that they find time to hire private jets to go to meetings which could feed whole villages and yet they say they care for the villages. Let us not be victims of party allegiance because as we have already said, the problem is not with the party, the problem is with us, including you and me. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, doc uh, Dr. Matanga, I want to uh, concur with the professor. Um, I, my focus was on opposition, but uh, it, it, it was we are talking about external, uh, uh, I mean, destabilization. But if we talk about internal politics, of course, uh, there's no holy cows in issues of governance in, in Zimbabwe, in particular in Africa. But in not Zimbabwe, don't. Thank you. Not, not only Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. All we, of us. We, we have a cross range of Nigeria. Let's look at Buhari. Buhari in, in Nigeria. A silly tall guy, a nation with 220 million people, which could buy all African goods produced in your factory in Harare. People sleep on top of water. Have you seen what happens? Uh, Mr. Maina, when you are in Europe, you see houses built on top of water. Because there is no land. Is there no land there? Yeah, there's no <laughs> land. This is the Africa that PLO preaches alone single-handedly. They, That's they why can, we have now come. You know, David, say, they can live on water, but with dignity. In the Netherlands, they have reclaimed land. You. We can also yes. reclaim land. The problem is that the people are living without dignity. Okay, That's without true. dignity, they live in Nigeria. You tell me that after 60 years, Nigeria has no electricity. In some parts uh, of Nigeria, people have never seen electric wire. Dr. let me come in. Uh, yes. Come in, that's the, the fire. Tinashe, have you finished yeah. or you hold your point? No, 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 I, I didn't finish. Uh, okay, finish I, I, I touched it. Okay, and I touched on. Minor. Okay, all right. I touched on legislation uh, as another solution. And then the second, um, uh, I, I I think I want to believe that elections uh, are, 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 are useless. Uh, they, are, they are not. They don't suit our um, our governance uh, as Africans, which was which is traditional uh, without opposition, because the opposition is opposition uh, contest for power, uh, and when there's contest for power, as the prof said, that the the, the the ruling parties are monopolizing power. The opposition also want the power. So this this power contest, the, the victims are ordinary people. And the victims is the economy because it encourages looting. Because those who are in power, they are, they are afraid of losing power and, and, and losing the opportunity to loot. And those are in opposition, they want to loot when they're in power. So whoever gets his hand into anything, they grab it. So now the scramble of, of our resources is, is done domestically by ourselves, externally by the, by, by, by the colonizers. So, 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 so if there, there, there are two ends, external and internal, the resources are in trouble. And, the, and Africa, poverty would, would win, always. Poverty has won, indeed. In Nigeria, people sleep on top of water, not even with dignity. And African get gentleman from Nigeria himself goes back to trust. You saw on BBC, the media, the role of the media in our elections. As you address that point, Maina, role of the media, external Western media. We saw people climbing on the white, on the building in New York, uh, in, in Washington. They dismantled the windows 
250 years of democracy. People broke down the windows that have been there for years and years. Is there democracy anymore? Because of elections. Now, why are African leaders corrupt? Uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Let me gain it. Uh, corruption, we are not talking about African leaders. Corruption is a system, Dr. mean when the, the government are behind the time planning and demographic system, corruption will be there because you are not able to have a, a long view. They don't have a prospect. They did not plan for the future of the country. Corruption is not one person we say African leaders, they are very corrupt. The system itself, you can have corruption even in democrat country, but the system, how it operates, it becomes so totally different. The case we are having in Africa here is not even corruption. Even they, they, they mismanage even what they have. They don't, it, we are not talking about corruption in Africa. If you have a given the resources, you don't even know how to manage it. Are you corrupt? No, you don't even know what you are doing. <laughs> Oh, okay. Of course, you can't take it. Yes. <laughs> if we have, it's only in Africa you can see that we can do the provision of our budget by waiting external countries for aids in our budget. You are waiting, they say, this percentage of money we are waiting, these people to help us. And you are talking, there is no corruption. They don't even know how to manage it. Tanzania has proved us wrong that we can manage what we have to do the best what we can do. Maina talk about Maina talk about Tanzania. The, the speaker of National Assembly has just resigned. It's okay. We will uh, go through it later. Now we are talking oh, about the situation. Yeah. I want to give you the speaker. This is a fire program. I can know the time. Guy, at least there is dignity there. There is dignity resigned. at least. Yeah. He has he resigned by. after disagreeing okay. with President Sururu about. Tony Blair and other people who have come in to help as experts. So I wanted to give you the news. I've just okay. received the letter just a few minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, Maina was making a point which I want to hear before I yes. lose. Go ahead. Yes. So you see, we did not have a, a, a strategy in Africa to manage timing and planning. You see, all the, the system of governance who teach was. We was teach in 1960 is the system we are putting. And imagine 1960, we are Africa is less than half a billion. But now, imagine that you are a bachelor, you live in one room self contain You get married, you stay in the same place. You have one children, ch child, you stay two, three. How how do you want to succeed? I mean you are not intelligent. You will end up yeah. in problem. And this yeah. is the situation we find ourselves in Africa. The poor governance, and we are saying is a corruption because we did not plan. And now the world is becoming a global village. We are into industrialization and Africa want to key in in this world and have a voice. And we cannot have a voice, get respect, develop our continent with the system we are going with. It is totally absurd. It's not going to work at all because it we can. are behind. Mm. If, today, right. if today there is a conference in Paris with, uh, or in Europe with the professor, there is no power there. And which mm. voice do we have there? We don't have we don't have a voice. So I, the main I, I, thing I, I, is that minor, minor professor, as you answer this and talk about this, anybody who wants to to talk something, please put up your hand. I'll yeah, let me you. just make because I may lose uh, the power of my uh, okay. Your phone, my, yes. okay. <laughs> so first of all, I can't agree more with Maina, and you've given a very good analogy. You are in a sink a bed sitter and you, your family continues to grow and you do nothing about it. And that analogy is perfect about Africa. I think Africa has been very unfortunate in the quality of politicians that have had the honor and privilege of governing her. Of course, there are exceptions that we have seen. Tanzania has demonstrated where Songa talked about ethnicity, somebody else talked about ethnicity. Tanzanians within a generation through sound leadership succeeded in uniting the country. And during the short period that President Magufuli was there, he also 
demonstrated that you can use your own resources and achieve things for the good of the people. And of course, we have seen Paul Kagame, which example you have given, we could even have given the example of uh, Botswana, we could give the example of Paul Kagame in, uh, in, in Rwanda, as I've already said, Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso between 1983 and 1987, which demonstrate that if you have a dedicated team of individuals at the top, things can be done and can be done properly. The problem is that the countries I'm men mentioning are the exception other than the rule. And the more we mire ourselves into this uh, rapid contest for power, the more politics of the kind that is uh, underpinned by elections continues to threaten uh, the country. And, and I can give, uh, the, you've just mentioned the resignation of, uh, of Speaker Ndugai. It is out of a culture. In Tanzania, you remember that the former president Ali Hassan Mwinyi resigned when a prisoner escaped from prison. They have a tradition of people leaving office to take political responsibility. Most African countries don't do that. And the mm, point here true. is Africa is capable of doing this, but many voices must now be raised. And I believe that we are going to solve these problems there may be moments and of frustration. There may be moments when we think that it is too monumental, we cannot do it. But I think that there is a critical mass of Africans who are now beginning to rise and raising this issue. We may not see the fruits in our lifetime, but we must keep talking. We must keep irritating those who are the perpetrators of these activities and change will come. And you talked about the press. The press is very useful in this regard, but the press that we have in most African countries are not interested in the countries. If you look at the Kenyan print media, for example, for the last one year, the headlines is about this politician, that politician, about this politician, election. complete election. nonsense. And, and, and that is what we are fed with on a daily basis, either in the electronic and the print media. Okay. Gentlemen, we are about to come to the end. We have about 10 minutes. And every don't forget, every Thursday, starting from today, this program is fire to fire. Face the fire. It will be on from 7 o'clock East African Standard Time to 9 o'clock East African Standard Time. You can change it to your times. It is always here. You can join us. Give us, send us a topic. Professor, thank you very much for this good topic. And we want more topics so that people can talk. There is this question, as I'll give one of each of you a minute or two minutes to sir, to give up, give the views. Change of constitutions. Professor touched on changing constitutions. Every African country is changing a constitution. Every person, even people, are changing their age. <laughs> Do you know that uh, it's happening in Africa? <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> Maina, <laughs> I don't know. Mr. Idris, before he was assassinated, Dabi, your president, he had changed the age several times. Hmm? <laughs> that you did. Your date of birth was not known. But uh, the lane of the grave has never changed. The <laughs> grave was <laughs> so finally. Finally. Mr. Finally. Mr. 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 Paulo Beer of Cameroon has changed the several dates of birth. Every five years he says he's younger than he was. <laughs> now Given given this in Africa, looking looking at the power pool struggle we have in Somalia, for example, now next Labour behind me here, Somalia. The prime minister doesn't want to look at the president. The president doesn't want to look at the prime minister. The pre, the prime minister has taken the army near the president's palace. That before the president passes, he has to go through the security of the prime minister. We are changing constitutions. Watara changed his age. 
I'm avoiding to talk about certain countries which yeah for good reason <laughs> for some good reason because some of, my, <laughs> some of my friends might not be happy with with me but you think um, we we, ex we excuse you but 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 we know those two countries yes we have we have in south sudan what brought south sudan to look as it is is because of the elections Ria Kamacha was telling Salvaki, I want elections. They simply formed a party. A conflict started. Where else? Tigray, Ethiopia, elections, constitution. The new prime minister came in, brought a new party, sacked all Tigrayans. They went back and said, What do we have in this country? Nothing. Now, Professor Ueb, a lecturer, you lecture to us about constitutionalism. What is Africa going to do to stop this change of date of birth every time? <laughs> Even but, should but David and Dan, this is the last point. I hope uh, th this is the point. That, Perhaps even I, I even question myself, this constitutional law that we learned in school, is, there, is it really the solution to our problem? Are constitutions the solution to our problem? And, and you, you did not mention a number of countries, Kenya and Uganda included. In Kenya, for example, the president cannot see eye to eye with his deputy president. He instead he has embraced the leader of the opposition. And that in the face of a constitution which we thought would solve our problems. So I think there is a sense in which constitutions cannot solve our problems. We must evolve a culture. It is that culture that is going to inform our politics. And once that culture settles, then our problems would be solved. So this idea that every time we think we have a problem, we amend the constitution is really like climbing trees to look for fish. Our problems are a little bit more basic, and the sooner we realize where our problems are, the sooner we will get the right solutions. If you get, if the question is wrong, the answer will be wrong. In Africa, we are asking the wrong questions, and we will never get the right answers. I believe that others can unpack that particular statement that I've made. Thank you very much, Professor. PL or Mumba for joining us. Don't forget to join us on this discussion, fire to fire. And uh, <laughs> we are not going to let you go until we hear your wisdom. There are so many people who are listening at the moment and others who will listen to this type of wisdom that you have talked. If your phone goes off, unfortunately, because somebody technically removed your power, not us. <laughs> <laughs> because your house your house is very near my office and yeah, i'm wondering yeah, why you don't have, why you don't have power in my office has power. <laughs> <I was laughs> out of yeah. okay thank you very much let us continue as africans to try every to thursday remember every thursday from seven to nine o'clock thank you chat. let's be chatting the course the way of Kenya, the way of Tanzania, the way of Zimbabwe, the way any country coming on board. I want to begin with Tinashe. Your yeah, I, I think the solution is the ideology of Ubuntu, uh, embracing each other. We need to, 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 to amplify uh, the, the noise on, on principles, dignity, uh, and, 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 and loving each other. We need to love ourselves and then love our fellow brothers. Uh, principles and morality, that's what we need in Africa. Ubuntu, that the ideology. Uh, I, I, I agree with the professor that he, uh, with the professor that the constitutional, constitutionality, constitutional law, the constitution, they, they are not solving our problem because it's, it's a piece of paper. And we know that there are certain people who can abuse the constitution depending on their status their financial status and their uh, political uh, uh, power so i think the constitution is it truly is not solving our problems as africans and we and we are not we are we are, we abuse the, the law it, it's, it's normally directed to the weaker uh, 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 people in our society the most powerful are protected by the constitution and they violate it willy-nilly so i think ubuntu we need to to push more of morals 
dignity principles. Moro Ubuntu with dignity. Does it change? We need to change Africa. Tina yeah. Shem, hold yeah, it is. the fire. Okay. Hold the fire there because you listen to the others. Ambassador Maina from Paris. Your yes, parting, Dakari, uh, your parting shot. Yes, thank you. When we talk about constitution, you see it's not a constitution. They are just a put a system, uh, a set of rules that can uh, favorize the political party and the people in the uh, in the position, you know, to better themselves. It's not for the better government of the country. So me, I cannot consider the uh, constitution. I'm talking about uh, just setting a rule or a motion in a country to favorize them. That's why you see it's never work at the end of the day. Because if you are changing the constitution just to stay in power, you have not changed any constitution. You just impose the people what you want. At the end of the day, when we talk about constitution, mean is a set of rules that govern the people of the country for the betterness. It's not it's things that we, we, ask, we have to say, no, Dr. Matsanga is uh, apt enough to stay in this power and we change the constitution, he can come back. This is not the constitution. This is how we, we, they are just uh, using the name, you know, to close the eye of the population. But for me, I don't think it's a constitution. And at the end of the day, what kind of constitution we are talking about is this constitution was drawn by Western countries, was not drawn by our culture, but our system of government, by our quality, how we need our people to be governed. 90% of Africans' constitution, when you read them, there was, there was draw before independence. But now time has changed. The population, the mindset, the system of development, everything has changed. But did we adapt this constitution to our system now? No. So mean that there is no constitution in Africa, Dr. Tari. The only things we need to do now to go back to the drawing board to see what is going to work for us. Do we need to try something else? Because this one does not work. We have changed, we lie to ourselves, we force, we fight, we come back. We know it's not working at the end of the day. It's not working, especially all those uh, French countries. There is no any French country now is doing better. Started from Senegal, Mali, Ivory Coast. When you go to Guinea, you go to Cameroon, the Gabon, all those countries, you know that nothing is working. It's just like, like they are covering a bomb. Sooner or later, it will blow. But we are just uh, clo closing our eyes. But at the end of the day, it will happen. How come in 2020s we are having push in Africa? 2020, after 70, 60 years, 60 something years, Dr. Ari. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Maina from Paris. Hold and listen to the last, to other people. Kumaro from Western Cape in South, Southern Africa. Kumaro. Right, right. Um, I think. Um, let, let, let me just start my video. I think you, okay, there we go. I think w w what's important when we're having these discussions as well, you know, to complement what everyone is, is, is talking about, there is the idea of political literacy. Now, it is one thing to change constitutions and start making all these changes that we're discussing. But do the people on the ground understand what exactly is at stake. Do the people on the ground understand what active citizenship is about? Now, uh, my brother here, um, I think Tinasha was, was talking about, you know, sometimes the opposition um, does this and does that. You know, sometimes uh, political parties are only known on the ballot or in terms of the number of seats that they hold. But how the actual system works of after election day, what is the expectation? How do we hold each other accountable? So the citizens and the political parties, how do we work together as a team to actually build our communities? That literacy is missing. And thank you very much for platforms like these ones. Hopefully more people will start to engage and hopefully people on the ground may start to understand what is at stake, I mean at stake in terms of our livelihoods. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kumaro. Don't go away. Before you go away, you have raised a very serious point of education. Are people educated? Have we educated our people to reject certain things? 
so that they don't fight, so that we don't dismember Africa. Because elections is going to be there one way or the other. Everybody seems to be focused on elections. Sumbule Wafura. Let me hear your comment. Uh, thank you so much for this platform and for the engagement so far. It's been really educative. Uh, yeah, for me, my comment on constitution, I believe even the best constitution is a prescription. We need to swallow the medicine. We can keep on prescribing ourselves that I, I need to, my head is uh, aching. We need to swallow the medicine. We need to change our manners. We need to respect the set rules and that we are putting in place. Uh, Additionally, I, be, uh, I, I did not get a chance to comment on the last topic on external dark forces. I believe that uh, uh, Africa is captive to the external dark forces, but also internal failures and incapacities by our leaders. And lastly, uh, the, the <clears throat> on, uh, on, on your generation, <laughs> the generation has tried so much in helping Africa shape its course. Personally, I've been educated in Kenya all my life. I've only moved to Europe right now. And although I've been educated in Kenya, the Kenyan education system is still Eurocentric. So with platform like this, while we are trying to, to shape the African narrative, it's a right step, but we must keep walking. Thank you so much. I want to, you to stay there. Then Daniel. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Masanga David. And uh, in regards to uh, my remedy or maybe prescription on what can bring uh, more good to Africa is that uh, we need to reevaluate. We need to advocate more for Pan-Africanism. We need to advocate for more uh, Pan-Africanist uh, activists like you, Dr. Matsanga David, like uh, PLO uh, Lumumba and my comrades uh, who are joining the uh, platform tonight so that we are able to tell our African people that uh, uh, we might be believing that uh, the white man left our land, but all is not well. We need to be assertive uh, in the way that we run our business. And I believe once we are able to do that, we will actually come to the point of point of confluence on agreeing that uh, we need actually to uh, repeal and replace the systems that were put there uh, by the white man to ensure that uh, in as much as they took uh, their boats to Europe or to America or wherever they came from, they had their spies back here in Africa, just monitoring the way we do our affairs, just looking at how we even uh, consume our resources and all that. And and that is why since the time of colonization and independence up to now, we still have CIA agents still meddling in African affairs and no one is ready to talk about it. So therefore, in my conclusion, Dr. Matsanga, I submit that uh, we need more Pan-African voices. If we had Pan-Africanism spirit uh, in Africa fully running, we wouldn't be having Rwanda and Uganda uh, having their borders closed now, close to three years. That is not what we wish for as African people. We need to open up our borders for our people to travel without having to apply for visas. We need to open our borders so that commodities from Zimbabwe can go to South Africa without the South Africans feeling that Zimbabwe is taking up its place in the world of commerce. We need Kenya to do business with Somalia, Ethiopia, and all other its neighbors, including those ones even in West Africa. That is what we hope to have as an ideal Africa, Dr. Masanga. I submit. Godfrey, iPad, my brother, you haven't talked. Do you have any comment? We had Marwal from Juba, Sudan. Thank you very much for all that you have said. It's summarized in the question, elections are a problem in Africa. Corruption is always one of the, the fires that you add in bad elections, <laughs> then you blow up Africa. And Mr. Fred Mugisha from Uganda says for sure, people have changed the dates of birth <laughs> in order to cling to power. Kiriji, Givingi says, the constitution is not the answer. Personal interest is the problem. I think election and the conflict need to be discussed. 
at length, that is what Emmanuel Marwal from Sudan, South Sudan in Juba is saying. And he goes further to say, Dr. Matsanga, corruption is associating with tyrant of numbers. Where you find the biggest tribe, like in their country, the Dinka, there is more corruption. Yeah, I don't know about that, Nashe. All of you come from tribes in Africa. So, gentlemen, here we are, every Thursday from 7 o'clock, to nine o'clock, from six o'clock to eight o'clock, Central African time, be guests and also bring in topics from your countries, not only me. The platform is here. Bring your topics, we discuss. Professor Pierre Lumumba brought me that topic. I modified it, put up a question. Fire to fire fire to fire and the next time i want people to feel free to put up hands don't allow tinashe to speak more when you have had something which you don't like i want it fire to fire daniel maina humalo i want you to raise the fire wafura raise the fire people will come on this platform this is punchline africa television the only television that started in Kenya six years ago, online, and the people laughed at me when I was doing this television online. Daniel Wesonga will tell you they thought, what type of television is online? But today, <laughs> I have 80, over 18 million people have passed through my hands. And those who have been educated have liberated the two countries in Africa. One of them is Gambia. I liberated Gambia from Yahaya. I took my satellite phone into Gambia until we got rid of Mr. Yahaya. Yes. And I'm still fighting to get rid of Mr. Paul Beer so that the Ambazonians, my friends, can get freedom. 42 years, the wife, the hair that you see on the head of Paul Beer's wife is $1 million. And it is packaged and washed. Do you know where they wash it to service it? In New York. Then it is thrown back. So, next time, our topic of the day on Thursday next week will be Does Africa deserve poverty? Do we deserve to be called a poor? country do we deserve to be given covid 193 leftovers you are given leftovers are you not ashamed as an african mm -hmm. when people vaccinate their people first then give us leftovers thank you very much the panel today tinashe from zimbabwe but living in south africa thank you very much my brother sumbule wafura from Kenya, but living in Europe. Which part of Europe you say? Italy, Florence, Italy. Italy, Florence, where uh, Machiavelli was. Yes. You are in the capital city of Machiavelli, Nicolai Machiavelli. Yes, and the Medici family. Yes, and the, yes, the mafia there. Don't become a mafia yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Kumaro from the University of Western Cape in South Africa. My brother, thank you very much for your contribution today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next time, all the time. And don't feel free when you want to use this platform, just send me a note on my email is africastrategy at hotmail.com africa strategy at hotmail.com lowercase all letters are lowercase send me an email and say i want this topic to be discussed i want you to put me to ask questions tell other students tell other people tell administrators tinashe thank you very much for the the the, the, the information you gave out and very many people 
Those who have not seen now will pick up the, the tapes later. It will be on, like, continue seeing it. Lastly, Daniel Wesonga, thank you very much for joining us. Daniel Wesonga is an investigative journalist. He's a man who can find out so many things when you don't know. <laughs> and he works with Pan Af Pancha in Africa Television. We have worked together for many years on a number of things. We support the handshake that has taken place in this country for the prosperity and the peace that we see at the moment. Let's see how things stand. But the struggle continues. Thank you very much. Tinashe, Wafula, Kumaro, Daniel, Piero Lumumba Professor, and Maina Ambassador from Chad. Thank you in Paris. This station is for Africa, with Africa by Africa. Ciao. must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. <laughs>